week. Tons to talk about also with uh, Dr. Alvarado. First off, great to have you back. Sergio, how are you? Good. Great to be back. Well, it's great to have you back uh, more than anything else. Busy weekend, I'm sure. Hey, listen, uh, there's a lot going on right now, not just in football and the sports world, but locally as well, right? There's never a dull day for you and the Desert Institute of Sports Medicine. That's right. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're pretty busy. A lot of a lot of uh, sports uh, wrapping up and a, a lot of port, like sports uh, halfway to wrapping it up. So we've had a lot of injuries, unfortunately. Oh, man, it's not that's not good, but it's OK. We'll talk about a lot of that coming up. Hey, in the meantime, I know we uh, we've lost some big legends over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the most recent, obviously, Jim Forbes, unbelievable turnout uh, to his memorial service and clearly one of the uh, the legends uh, of uh, of just this local sports world. That's right. I mean, uh, uh, even what, what he did as a as a player with with Bel Air and then uh, going on to college and, and then uh uh, turning down the NBA to come back and, and coach, you know, that that's, and then uh, taking Andres and, and uh, Riverside pretty far, you know, the farthest anybody's ever taken them, uh, a legend. And, and and like you said, uh, it wasn't just about the coaching. It's all the, the lives he touched, you know, as a, as a great guy all around. So, Absolutely. And and you look at the, uh, the coaching tree of, of Don Haskins, especially in the high school level, and you start to think about it because there have been some incredible former players that have gone on to become great, great coaches that all played for Coach Haskins. Bobby Leslie and what he was able to do uh, back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Uh, you look at Jim Forbes over the last 40 years. Uh, just two to name a, a, a ton out there when you when you really start to go back and, and look at everybody else. There's been more, uh, you know, that that have just been able to come from that coaching tree and, and dominate. Plus, Jim Forbes did it as a player first. And he went to the uh, Team USA in 72 Olympics. And then, uh, obviously, all those great years at the Riverside and, and Andrus. That's right. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I know there was that big controversy with with the, the Olympics. You know, you brought up the Olympics and and. Uh, the, that that team that you know uh, not accepting the the medals because there's yep. a but yeah like they they I mean silver medals I mean that that's that's great you know for and this was like obviously the the era before the the dream team you know way before then and and uh, uh, a great like like I said great around great player and and great coach and he will be missed as you know uh, El Paso uh, lost the legend. No doubt about it. Uh, Tony Harper and uh, Kenny John, two other great uh, former players also for Coach Askins. They went on to have great high school coaching careers. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good list. You can also include, obviously, the easy ones like Nolan Richardson, part of that list, Tim Floyd at the college level, uh, what they've been able to do. But, man, and, and the pro level for that matter. So it's a pretty uh, pretty uh, remarkable coaching tree when, it, when it's all said and done. So no doubt. And uh, Jim Forbes, somebody that I think will have a, a legacy uh, that will last uh, you know, lifetimes from now because people will look back and realize just uh, what an incredible coach, but human being he was and how many people that never even played for him and just went to school for classes that he taught and what an impact uh, he had on their lives as well. That's right. And like you said, the, the, a huge turnout and, and uh, he will be missed. And, and uh, my heart goes out to his family and, and uh, El Paso. Yeah, they lost a the legend. Doc, you ready for the weekend, especially championship Sunday in the NFL? Yeah, you know, like uh, I, I'm sure you, you all that uh, we had a lot of great games uh, this last week and uh, a lot of a uh, couple of upsets and, and some that we were kind of expecting uh, that that uh, I mean, uh, the the bills and and kansas city like uh i i really think that, you know that they should they should rethink the whole you know they should go back to the whole college thing like you know they, and really like rethink about the whole coin toss and give everybody a chance but you know i, I don't know if you guys remember like what it, kind of similar situation with the saints about two years ago and and then it came down to the coin toss and uh they were both hot you know the bills and 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 the 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 kansas city and i really think that if it had been the other way, I think the Bills would have scored too. Doc, who's going to the Super Bowl? Who do you have as far as going to the Super Bowl out of these teams right now? Well, I'll give you like who I would like, and you got the Chiefs and the and the Bengals. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I the the Bengals they they're young and hungry, but I, I I don't think they I don't see them pulling it off yet. You know, like uh, two three years, I think these guys are going to be uh, a team to contend, and I think the Kansas City is going to going to take that one. And then on, on the other side, uh, I, I just think uh, 
you know, Garoppolo and, and uh, the 49ers, they, they did a lot, you know, like uh, obviously a lot of, a, a lot of uh, Packer fans are uh, very sad, but uh, I, I don't think, I think the Rams are going to take the other side and I think it's going to be a Rams and, and Chiefs Super Bowl. How about you guys? What are, what are you thinking? I went, I went um, 49ers and Chiefs. But Adrian's a diehard Rams fan, so I know he's not going against his team. There's no way. Oh, right? man. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going Rams and whoever wins. And the other guy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's nice, Doc, when you actually have one of your favorite teams still alive this late in the playoffs. I, right? I, yeah. I, it's. I don't know what that's like, and I might not know what that's like for years, but that's okay. I get to root for everybody else, which is fun. That's right. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm, uh, I don't even uh, – my team doesn't even have a name, you know, so <laughs> – I, I, uh, February 2nd, you know, we're supposed to find out the big, the big, uh, reveal. Um, hopefully they, they, I don't know. It's looking like it, it might be the, the, the presidents or the wild hogs. I don't know. What would you like it to be as a Washington, longtime Washington football fan? If you had your pick of, well, you know what, I, name, what do you want? No, I, 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 I actually like the, the, the Red Wolves, and and it's it it was surprising, like it was very it was very well well liked by when they did all the, um, they asked around and and unfortunately like it, it became a copyright because I think there's a college team that that uh, I don't know where, where they have it but somebody has the name and, and unfortunately that that's that would have been my favorite the Red Wolves and and it actually like the it it's it's kind of nice because they're there there actually is a red wolf and they're they're endangered and so like that would have been nice to even have that part too yeah i understand we're talking with dr Sergio alvarado from the desert institute of sports medicine as we continue can you imagine what uh jimmy garoppolo must be going through having to play with these injuries like he is and still taking his team all the way to the championship yeah and that's you know the the it's a small window and and uh right now it's it's uh Win or go home, and 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 really, like it, it comes down to what what can you do as as uh even on the on the trainer side, you know, there like I've seen it a lot, you know, like in the the high school and the college level, like when when it comes time to the the playoffs, district games or or bowl games in in college, um, a lot of patch up jobs, and it's like, hey, let's get you to the next game, and 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 uh, just try to get you a, a, as much as much playing time that but without sacrificing a, a bigger injury. And it's, it's really just a balance game too, because at the end of the day, like there's, there's some, some that you really can't play through your, you know? So I think, yeah, that my, the Garoppolo that, uh, with his injury, it's, it's going to be tough. Like we'll, we'll see what, what, uh, what you can do against your team. Adrian. <laughs> Not going to be easy. That's for sure. But that should be a fun. I don't know if any of these games are going to live up to what we just saw last weekend. That's for sure. Yeah, I know that this this past weekend that that's uh, I, I was I was impressed. Uh, all the all the games, you know, even even uh, even the Packer, I, I guess I I thought they were really gonna explode, you know. And obviously the the snow and the weather took a toll. Uh, I guess a lot of people didn't take their their Viagra this time. So. <laughs> hey, that's that's that's. I mean, Viagra started trending a couple of weeks ago, Doc. We talked about it. Uh, although, although, I don't know if Josh Allen really needed any because he played terrific these last couple of weeks. And it's a shame that somebody had to lose. And uh, ultimately, uh, you know, it was either Allen or Mahomes and uh, Allen ended up uh, being the one to go home. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, last week uh, or two weeks ago, when we were talking about it. Uh, my girlfriend made a comment. She said that, that it's just, it's just a ploy to get the, the female membership uh, audience uh, increased, but yeah, the the really the, the the physiology, you know, like some of the players, what they what they what they'll, I guess they're they're lucky rabbit, and and uh, the things they'll try just to get that edge, you know. I hear you. We're talking right now with the Jock Doc, Doctor Sergio Alvarado from the Desert Institute of Sports Medicine here on Sports Talk. As we continue, all right, let's shift it over to pro wrestling because we wanted to do this the last time we brought you on. Now we get a chance to do it uh, this time. What got you into pro wrestling to begin with? I think maybe just growing up with, uh, I'm the youngest of, of three. Um, I got two older brothers and, and, uh, they, they, everywhere we went, you know, we would, we would be wrestling. And I, and I, I guess being, being, a a border town, it, it, it was from both sides, you know, like the, the Santo and Blue Demon on, on 
on the Mexican side and Hulk Hogan and um, that bunch from Andre the Giant, like on the other side. And I guess from both 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 sides, I, I we, we grew up watching it both both, you know. And so um, something we 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 enjoyed, you know, growing up. You know, you look at the way the sport is and you look at ultimately the physical toll that it's taken on so many of these wrestlers over the years. In fact, it's really sad, but I I look back at my childhood and really the 80s, the early to mid to late 80s and how many of the of the greats are no longer with us. And they've all died so young from either injuries, painkillers and all the physical stress and, and strain that uh, touring 300 plus days a year took on their body all those years. Right. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, of course, the, you know, the, they jump on the bandwagon. Oh, oh, this is fake. And it's, it's their, their professional stuntmen. And that's, that's what it comes down to. Like, and, and then exactly what you said, uh, even just, just the toll of, of traveling, you know, uh, there is no, there's no like off season for wrestling, like there is for other sports. It's, it's pretty much year round. You know, what so, else is, you know what else is really tough about professional wrestlers is that um, health care is not part of their package. So they got to pay for their own health care themselves. Often they struggle with that because of the amount of money that healing uh, off, off of these injuries really take on their bodies. And, um, and, and they're not unionized. So ultimately, if they want to try to fight for more um, uh, benefits, nobody's going to give it to them because they'll be out of a job and then looking for the next uh, group to pick them up. So it's really difficult when you're a professional wrestler, unless you're a superstar, you know, a lot of the times you don't have any choice, but just to deal with the injuries and everything that comes with, uh, with performing. Right. And, and uh, then, then uh, like you said, uh, I, something that I, I kind of think about, like when, when you bring up the, the wrestlers just kind of patching up, I, I kind of think of the rodeo as well. The, the rodeo has the same problem when, when we covered the rodeo in, in uh, Dallas, uh, these guys would come with their medical records and, and pretty much, you know, like every, every town they visited, the, the doctor would, would kind of sign off. And, and uh, uh, I remember uh, uh, this guy just, you know, he had, I, I just removed his cast and he, he went back out there and with wrestling, it's the same thing, you know, like, like you said, a lot of, you know, they, they, uh, they don't really have a, a, a set system that of, of medical care that that's, um, that's available to them. That's a good point, Doc. As we're talking with Dr. Sergio Alvarado from the Desert Institute of Sports Medicine here on Sports Talk as we, we continue. I mean, injury-wise, I've seen uh, bad uh, knee injuries, back injuries, neck injuries, anything you could possibly imagine. You land wrong, and all of a sudden, you know, you are getting, you are hurt, and, and you're going to be out a while. And that's the thing is, you know, you start to look at it, I'm curious, um, you know, what are some of the, the worst injuries you've had a chance to hear about for professional wrestling all the years? Well, and, and, and you said it exactly. And, and then you have these, uh, the, the size of these guys, you know, like you, you have these six foot guys and, and jumping off, uh, uh, you see a lot of, of, of ACL injuries, but one that comes to mind is, is, uh, Sid Vicious. I don't know if you remember Sid Vicious. I do. It, uh, he, he ends up, you know, like jumping off. He never would go on the off, you know, it was always just, you know, like his moves were always on, on the ring and he decides to go up, um, uh, for, a, for a kick lands on the left leg and, uh, breaks his leg. And, and, and the only thing that, that the reason why it wasn't shown was because he was wearing these black boots, but, uh, it was a, it was an open fracture. He, he actually like the, the bone was sticking out and, and he still kind of had to wrestle, you know, like, and, and that's like you said, like the, the unfortunate part is, uh, like that, that ended his career, you know, that, that, uh, and, and, and while he, he is a performer, like he, it was a real injury and and it happened, uh, just by landing wrong. It wasn't even anything that, that, uh, a bad accident, you know, same thing with Bret Hart, his career ended short after a match with Goldberg, he landed wrong. And ultimately, you know, he thought it probably cost him millions because he was in the beginning of a contract with WCW at the time. And ultimately his career gets cut short. And then you start to look at, uh, you know, tragedies like how we lost Eddie Guerrero years ago. And it was because of ultimately a lot of pain medicine he was taking to try and at least mask all of the physical toll on his body. You know, we talk about the injuries, but then you talk about sometimes how a lot of these performers 
they they get prescription pain medication, and ultimately, sometimes it uh, it it ends in tragedy. Right, and and uh, unfortunately, that 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 was the case with with Eddie Guerrero. You know, a great legend from home, homegrown from Jefferson High School. Um, and and you're right, uh, way way before his era, you know, the uh, there there was a. Uh, uh, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, you know, he he had, he suffered from a lot of, of pain injuries. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, more more recently, you know, he he uh, he actually started a, a yoga program, and and uh, it's actually a very good program. Like I was kind of surprised, you know, because it's it he he made it uh, for for uh, for wrestlers suffering from back pain and and from from people that that had had morbid obesity, and and uh, a lot of people actually have benefited from him. And and uh, like you said. Uh, the the bad thing is is a uh, a lot of these guys aren't able to to uh, to get the help they need to get off these pain meds. You know, it starts off uh, with just trying to control the pain, and then it, it becomes an addiction, and and then uh, it spirals, and, and unfortunately, then some lives are lost along the way. You know, you talk about what wrestlers can do to try to prevent injuries. Sometimes you can't. I mean, sometimes it just freak things happen. You land wrong in the ring, and and that's what happens. But it's interesting because when you talk to the best wrestlers, they'll tell you that. Even in the biggest matches with the most heated, uh, you know, type of storylines, they're always trying to protect one another. That is their number one goal is put on a great show for the crowd, but ultimately protect themselves, protect the person they're in the ring with to try to keep them from getting hurt night in, night out. That's right. And and and, and most of the, the tragedies that you see that uh, are, are just that freak accidents, like you said, you know, um, Owen Hart, unfortunately, you know, like uh, he, he ended up falling from 500 feet and, and it was a series of bad events, you know, that 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 led to to his death. Great wrestler, you know, uh, coming from a big wrestling family, the the heart, the heart family. Absolutely. Well, listen, that's a that's a story in itself because they never should have even gone near the harness that ultimately tried to lower him down to the ring, which unfortunately uh, gave out and he fell to his death, uh, landing hard in the ring, trying to like the way Sting was back in the days when he had the crow gimmick and would descend into the ring. But that's we could do 20 minutes on that in itself. So unfortunately, we don't have time for that. But hey, I've enjoyed the wrestling talk today. And if you don't mind. Tell me a little bit about what's going to be happening over at 2267 Traywood Drive. Doc, I know you're about to be reopening that office at the Desert Institute of Sports Medicine. And uh, I know you got to be excited about reopening uh, the Traywood location. That's right. Yeah, you know what? Unfortunately, like the our our uh, revamp kind of took a, a, a turn for, for, I guess it, it actually got delayed because of, of COVID. We, one of our, our the contractors got sick and it got delayed, but now it's, 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 it's going, uh, I know agents seen the, the gut now and, and, uh, it's a lot bigger. Um, we, we, uh, we're giving it a little bit more of a, of a sports medicine feel. So I think our athletes will like it. And, and, uh, we got a lot more space and obviously like, uh, we, we have, a, we have more, more and, uh, more athletes coming in and hearing about it. So we're excited about this, this, uh, upcoming, um, opening and, and, uh, we're we're uh we'll wait we're, we'll be there waiting for for new patients too you know speaking of new patients if you would like to uh, schedule your appointment you can call 915-256-9751 that's 915-256-9751 for the desert institute of sports medicine dr Sergio alvarado and when you make your appointment hey and you want to talk a little pro wrestling maybe you'll get some extra time with doc before you get to see him for the first time <laughs> that's right I actually know I have two two uh, patients are always we're always talking about WWF and <laughs> that's I guess they they know which what's my soapbox there. <laughs> right, good. Who's your who's going to win the Royal Rumble this weekend, Doc? I don't know. I I, I think it's going to be one of the new guys. Uh, I know. Um, oh man, just blanking out on on. Uh, oh gosh, he comes out with the long coat. I'm I'm, I'm just kind of Edge Edge is coming back. I, I yes. that's what I heard. Yeah, so I mean, like, Edge, Edge has, has a chance to possibly win it. That would be yeah, and 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 I, I'd like. I mean, I know like uh, sometimes they want the new guys, but uh, I'd like to see him win it. Uh, I know with the with the females, uh, uh, Rick Flair's daughters is is a yes a favorite Charlotte, there as well. Charlotte yeah. Flair, one of the best. So good for you. Hey, by the way, Jeff Jarrett's going to be in the Rumble. That should be a lot of fun for you, throwback fans. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I know. And, and the Royal Rumble is always, uh, you know, the, uh, it's always, you know, they always get, uh, uh, I don't know if you saw that, that uh, uh, it's Ronda Rousey might be, might be going yes. in there too for the. I heard the rumors. Are you, are you a Ronda Rousey fan from her uh, crossover with the MMA? Yeah. The, I, you know, I, I was, I was, uh, unfortunately I was watching the, the, her fight when she lost her, her belt. I was watching that in Albuquerque and, and of course, um, her, her opponent, um, I just blanked down her name, but her opponent was, was a, a local fan, local, you know, from Albuquerque. So I was pretty, I was the only one in there cheering for Ronda Rousey. So, uh, but I think she made a great, like, uh, and, and taking on, you know, like, uh, the, the Rowdy Piper, uh, uh attire you know the rowdy right yeah i think that that actually like it fits her and so uh who knows maybe she'll take this this uh royal rumble on the women's side that'd be fun to watch hey doc we'll get a chance to talk to you again here in a couple weeks appreciate the time and thanks so much for uh talking a little pro wrestling nice change for us today we enjoyed it thank you guys you guys have a great weekend you too